Well, hello, boys and girls. It's Pearl of Wisdom, and this is Pro Joe. Joe, we got Joe here. We're going to be doing a uh, look at the Toronto Maple Leafs and what they might do in the offseason, sort of their exit strategy, as you could say, after a very disappointing uh, bow out, I suppose you could say, to the Montreal yep. Canadiens. Um, that's uh that's this is to me this is a team that's learning how to be a warrior team and they lost to a team that had several warriors on it and now they're going in a little bit i think they're going into the off season a little shaken um they have no they have very little cap room that if any at all they have 12 million right now in cap room but they still have people to sign and uh, they got to rethink exactly what they want to do and what kind of team they want to be. Uh, I don't know. There's a, I know I'm talking to a lot of fans out here. I'm not hearing a lot of vitriol on this team. You know, it always is that yeah. way, right? When your team loses, it's, there's got to be a reason. Fire Dubas, fire this, fire the coach, trade everybody. So I brought in Joe to be kind of a sounding board to help us maybe put some uh, perspective on the Toronto Maple Leafs. So, Joe, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And you mentioned the 12 and a half mil. I mean, if you decide to keep um, Anderson there and you sign Hyman, most of that 12 and a half mil is gone. And then you're going to keep a Campbell's a UFA in 2022. So then you would still have him in house after coming off of a stellar uh, 17 and three uh, season. Um, so, I think uh, that's not a bad mode to go there if you think Freddie, if his health with your doctors checks out and you go, okay, we think he's actually going to be able to play and match, be a 1B, and we'll be able to kind of have both of these guys roll out and be confident in both of them. If that doesn't work, though, then you have to go down to the free agency poll. You're going to save some money. Uh, maybe you can get like a Halak who's teamed up for a while with Rask really well in Boston or somebody like that and go that route. So the first and foremost thing for any team you have to do is solidify your goaltending because you already worked on as the Maple Leafs solidifying your defense in the past. You brought in Jake Muzzin, of course, who unfortunately got banged up. That had an effect on their playoff. Brody, you brought in until the end of 2024. So you already have that. You have Hull until the end of 23. And then you have the youngster, Rasmus Sandin. So you already have the defense all right. Now you have to make sure you have a solidification in net. And Campbell, when healthy, showed he's a very good goaltender and able to really play and play well when everyone plays also well and there's no big injuries a la Jake Muzzin in front of him. Um, and I think him mixed with Anderson could work, but I feel like Toronto's not going to go that route just because of the back and forth the fans being so up and then so down about Freddie Anderson, I feel like they might just be like, this has played its course at this point and kind of let him go somewhere else that they might think that's better for them and better for him. So then it's going to come to the Halaks of the world, the James Reimers of the world, who of, of course has been <laughs> before uh, Bernier's of the world and different guys that you can stretch out and get, or maybe Aiden Hill, if you want to try to acquire RFA from a team, like the uh, Arizona Coyotes there. Yeah, I think that's a little on the da like a, a da I'm big on the uh, on the dangerous side. It, I think it do, just really depends on what they want uh, to like where they want to be if they want. Or Olmark. Yeah, guy. that's you that's the one we're going to look at for sure. There's all if I'm going to go for a guy right now, it's Olmark in Buffalo. He's twenty. His thing's health though too. Yeah. So you have to. Sure, his he has a little out. bit of health problems, but yeah, health yeah. But he's got upside. He's 28 years old. He's but he's like a he was kind of a late bloomer already as it was. Um, there's a good possibility that he's a number one. Buffalo was a much better team with Allmark in the in between the pipes, for sure. And if you're gonna do a platoon like that, that's the guy I'd be looking at. Otherwise, and it would depend on do they want to be. Do they want to go for it again next year? Because I think in this situation where uh, if you look at their team, I think they really have to come down. They're going to come and realize that they don't have enough depth on this team to be a real player in the playoffs. Um, it's possible that they look at it as Matthews is just learning to be a playoff performer. 
Marner's just learning to be a playoff performer. I don't know how injured Marner was or any of these guys were. That's a, and then Tavares got banged up. Tavares, that was huge... Tavares got but, hurt. Yes. Yeah. If Tavares doesn't get hurt there, they they may be a lot better off than you think. Then you know, not than you think, but they're they're probably not too a lot better off if Tavares doesn't get hurt there. So they'd help. It's yeah, quite I, possible yeah. that they could say, you know what, we're just going to keep going the way we're going, and we'll wait for cap space to go up. We'll grab some players in the off, uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, during the season are at the deadline to fill holes that we think they need to be filled, and we're just going to keep rolling that way. I, I'm actually leaning that they go that way. That's probably what they yeah. do. But I like what you said. Goaltending is paramount here. Um, I don't think that they well, can I feel like in net, though, Anderson anymore. I feel like in net, if you do your Olmark idea, though, Olmark still, since of he him getting banged up a bit but playing well, is in the middle road goaltender salary. So, like, three and a half to probably five at most, which I don't think you would give him the five yet because of the not being consistent health-wise more so than on the ice. So I feel like if you get him, you already have Campbell, who's at 1.65, according to Cap Friendly. Um, Hutchinson, you already have for next year, which is pretty much at the minimum. And he played good in eight games when he had to come in this year at a 919 save and a 242. Yeah. So with those three, if you need, it seems like you have decent depth there because Hutchinson knows the system well, played well when needed. Campbell's played amazing. And then you're bringing in a guy with potential. And also, in order to help a guy stay healthy, it's good if he doesn't get an absolute onslaught against him every single game, which is what was happening in Buffalo. So I feel like he would obviously have a better chance to stay healthy in Toronto, which is why I think Campbell didn't have as much injury issue because they actually don't allow the onslaught like the Maple Leafs used to be accustomed to. They added guys like T.J. Brody, the Muzzins, the Holes that are more defensive than offensive. They got on their defense. So it kind of... uh, fits together better now more than the Maple Leafs defense did even five years ago so if they decide to stay the way they are here the issues that they have of course is uh first of all the 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 biggest free agent that that I think that either they need to sign or replace with the same type of player is Zach Kyman Zach Mm -hmm. Kyman has been absolutely huge for them now the issue here is that Zach Hyman's numbers have probably been propped up quite a bit by playing on that top line all the time. Uh, on a lot of teams, he might not play that role quite as much, and it's going to be a very difficult contract. I think um, Toronto will be looking somewhere, trying to get in the three and a half million mark, and I'm sure he could probably get close to five, if not five, on the open market. Probably. So yeah. if he wants to stay in Toronto, maybe they can get him for four. And then you've got about eight million left to sign a whole lot of guys to fill that roster. You know, Spezza wants to come back at seven hundred thousand. Sure, that's we'll, probably minimum. Yeah, we'll give you that. He's well worth that for what he did. He might have been there. You might be able to bring all Chenyuk, who played solid yeah. for you back. Another million since for that. Toronto, yeah. Toronto. Yeah, but barring that, then you've got next year. We don't know what the cap's going to be like next year. I have a feeling it's going to go up a little bit. But next year you got to sign. We, that much, so. They got to sign Riley next year, and uh, what kind of what kind of numbers do you think Riley's going to be able to pull out? Yeah, that's not going to be cheap. So you're going to have to you're going to be seven up, I would say, when, as long as he consistently plays how he's going. If he has a down year, then you might be more at six six and a half but that's that that's if you don't want him to have a down year though so i think he's closer I would, to eight yeah. myself i think he's gonna be right around eight yeah it depends of course on because if he wants to stay in toronto i think it's more seven up i think if he goes somewhere else he might even get someone probably will give him nine nine and a half even yeah. potentially yeah. If, yeah, he, so. if he decides to play the market then they uh, then definitely they could be in big trouble they gotta really hope that i'm gonna try to bring up Cap friendly here. Because um, he is a UFA. He's not an RFA after yeah, 2020. Yeah, so they got to so. sign him. They, he's a UFA. He's going to be able to have leverage because they have a market. And I think they have to sign him. That's my real question to you. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, so you have to sign him. You got uh, Zach Hyman. And then you, you know, say you give him four and you fill up the rest of your roster with, uh, you know, some guys that you want to keep, like Galchenyuk, Spezza, 
Um, maybe you can find another. You have to get person. Nicholas Robertson too. Who's not a bad. He's a slower developer, shorter kid, but he played well for the Marlies and. Given time, I think could be a solid player. Robertson? He just has to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, they Robertson, they yeah. need guys like Robertson to pan out next year. They got to get some small contract. Yeah, well, guys. he's only going to be twenty next year. He came up, I think, a little prematurely because of your aforementioned lack of depth on the roster. So, um, he got a cup of coffee. That's a good thing. Now he knows. I always say this about guys. I think it's good to get a cup of coffee because then you know how to grow your game for the NHL level and also for potentially starting in the AHL level to then build to that NHL level rather than just knowing how, what you have to do to get better at the AHL level. So I think that was huge for him to get that cup of coffee. So I think your writers show a step next year, but I feel like his age 21 season, which would be the following season, would be more when you're looking for him to break out, where next year would be the show a step year, if that makes sense, like take the next step type season. Like, be in, like, the 25 to 30-point range, show that you're playing pretty well, mixing in well, and then the next year, I think, when you're 21 is when they're going to see maybe him take off, be the scorer he's been at other levels, and uh, help guys on his line to be able to just be a fast skater that can generate a little bit. You're hoping so. You're hoping so. There's a lot yeah. of hope here in Toronto, right, now with with what we're saying, because if they do have to give him $8 million, if they do, like, say that they have to give Riley $8 million next More year, um, they're going to be even in a tighter situation, and depth is going to be even more difficult to, uh, to, to find and acquire. Um, there has been talk, and I, I, this could be just fans going off because he had a poor season, but I can see the case for it, and not because, not poor season, but a poor playoffs, and not being Mitchell Marner. Uh, Mitchell Marner being traded for, for depth pieces. And I did a piece on this too. You can go check it out. Marner, who, where, where, where you can trade Marner and why and whatever. If you're going to do that, I get it. Um, but let's, well, let's not look at it from that perspective. From what you've seen of this Toronto Maple Leafs team and, and organization so far, do you think that's something that they would even entertain? Probably not. It doesn't seem like it. I mean, if you're talking about someone, obviously he performed well in the playoffs, but in terms of the down year on that line, that wouldn't even be Marner. The guy that had the down year on the line, which not even he had a bad year, at 42 points in 51 games, but in comparison to the other two, would honestly have been Nylander in comparison to the other two players on that line. Matthews and Marner were both in the 60s. Nylander was down in the low 40s. So... I think people just got on him because of recency bias. It was a playoffs. He didn't have a good playoffs, so now you're going to get on him because of that. Nylander, who didn't have as strong of a regular season, stepped up in the playoffs. Right. So the recency bias is really good on him, but the regular season was more adequate on him. Where for Marner, the regular season was great, but the postseason was not even really adequate. So I think that's kind of where it is there. But the difference is... I don't. If you move on from a Nylander in per comparison, you're only saving six nine. If you move on from a Marner, you then have ten point nine on your cap to then spend elsewhere, and you're obviously going to get rest sets for either or. So that's another thing that factors into it. Mitch Marner was going to give you great assets, let you spend extra money because you're having more money come off of your cap. Where Nylander's about four million less on the money tab, so that's going to play into the thing is, well, because you're obviously not trading Austin Matthews and you're not going to trade Jonathan Tavares. So no, no. those are the only two guys that I think you're going to move, unless if you already, which I think would be a mistake because he had a very good year for, for you, move on from TJ Brody because you did pay him $5 million, but I think he had a very good year, so I wouldn't recommend no. doing that. So yeah. the, the, and, that's why I think it's Mitchell Marner or Nylander. Those are the only two options. And it's not that you want to trade one of them. It's that you might have to. Yeah, I had him going possibly to a team like Detroit who might be ready or a team like L.A. that might be kind of more ready to take a little more of the next step. They've got the cap room, especially L.A. L.A.'s already came out yeah. and said that the rebuild is over. So there could be they, – they'd be able to give up some Kaliev or something like that and some – to, um, defense prospects that are ready to play very soon and a first round pick. And then I thought maybe you could go out and get like 
got those guys out of Tampa that they might not be able to, like Goudreau, Coleman, guys that can play with that ferocity that this team maybe is missing in the playoffs. But the thing with me on this one is Marner is actually that guy. He plays with a lot of, like for, uh, he, he's supposed to play that. That's what he was touted as when he was drafted and has shown that he, he's not afraid to go to the areas. You don't get 100 points in the NHL and be afraid to go to the to the areas that are needed, which leads me to think that maybe he might have been a little injured right now or whatever the case may be. But somebody brought up when I was doing uh, talking to people on my Facebook group, which you can go check out uh, uh, as well. Perlo, just search Perlo Wisdom and you'll find it. Um, Mar, I think it's been 18 playoff games and Marner hasn't scored a single goal. That's yeah, I did see a stat. He still, it's like a point six seven or higher like points per game because of how he started his career with the Leafs in the playoffs. So it's more again, in recency he's been struggling, but he still has solid overall stats. So you wonder why that's been the case. Could it be an injury? Um, who knows? But I mean, we see how good of a player he is. Um, I don't think it's the like Clayton Kershaw baseball effect where all of a sudden in the postseason he's not as good. I think it's just one of those things. It's one of those weird realm of sports things where sports are so much about how good a guy's doing, but we don't realize how much failure is in the process all the time of making a really good athlete, especially um, – in sports that are very physical like hockey there's going to be a lot of failure involved because you're going to be banged up you're going to be playing through stuff and you're that that's what's going to make you stronger in the end but he's still a young kid um he's a kid that's going to project really well and be a star in this league for a while so whoever gets them if the kings get him their team's going to take off because he's also we've seen kopitar start playing really well again well if you want to see him the most rejuvenated he can be Give him Mitch Morner on his <laughs> and, that, and that's exactly what LA needs is a guy, is somebody like, I mean, anybody does. A 100-point a game winner is not game, easy that. to find in this league. I, it's not a guy you want to send off if you don't have to. But I, I can see where it makes sense with the right package to be able to build some depth on this team. I don't think it necessarily has to go that way. I just think it's possible that you could see them go that way. The other one that I hear a lot of is um, – trading Riley and I just don't think that's an option I mean those kind of defensemen are way too difficult to find out there um, I heard again another going to uh, Anaheim for like a package with Lindholm and I like Lindholm but you don't want him to be in your top two as your best you know, you just, no, he's the, a guy's, good. the guy's way too good to, to trade away for yeah he's a good stuff. defensive defenseman on uh, Lindholm He's not the guy that you want to have you up there. He's a guy you want to have play in the right role. He's a similar to Justin Hole type guy that can just kind of shut him down, play him really well, use his stick really well in the defensive zone. He's one of those type guys. You don't want to trade Riley for him. Someone that probably will be going, though, since he's an RFA, I doubt they're going to want to have to pay him, is I'm sure they'll trade the services of Dermott probably to somebody and then hope Lindgren or they're signing another like, lower end defenseman to play down there could step up or they're just sign somebody in the free agency. That's like a to meet, like a, not necessarily Dmitry Kulikov, but someone like that or a Kukan type defenseman, uh, someone along those lines that could just yeah. kind of fit in down there. Yeah. They need Sandine to step up. I mean, he's only, he's only 21 years old. I heard all the stuff people were saying about Sandine in the playoffs. I mean, he's a 21 year old kid, you know, he was, he, that's, he's got all the tools. He's got the talent. He's going to be great. You don't need to worry about that. I they were talking about trading Nylander when they signed him back in the day or back in the and look at him now he looks like he might be another uh, 80 to 90 point winger on there I love him and I'm glad they never traded him because uh, to me it was a great contract that they gave to him um, but that's pretty much what their two options are I think looking at it and I think you said it too I think they're going to roll with the team they have and they're just going to slowly just keep on adding keep on adding the way they are, all the people calling yeah. for everybody's head and trading this player, or that player. Um, if there was, is there any other option do you think you see besides 
Marner or uh, trading Marner. Uh, one thing we did mention, we'd go back to goaltending. If they want to win right now, if it's like absolutely got to win right now, I think they'd have to go with a bang up goaltender, somebody like uh, it's possibly Laner or Flurry, whoever they decide in Vegas. And I think they might be the only options for that out there. Would you agree with that? Yeah, the only other option would be potentially maybe Kemper if you could get him, Darcy Kemper, because yeah. if he's healthy, he's a very good goaltender as well. So if you're able to get Darcy, that could work as well. Um, and then the Umar combination, if he stays healthy with the right team, you might be able to see him develop into a good starter with a combination of Campbell as long as your team doesn't get banged up at the wrong time like it did this year. That can actually take you to where you want to go because – Losing Tavares was a major loss. So then you lost one of your biggest minutes-eating defensemen in Jake Muzzin. So that was just a double whammy. Yeah. That was I think uh, that really played it. Yeah, yeah that, that really played into the downfall of the Maple Leafs. So having two solidified net minders and then also having Hutchinson, who knows the system and played well, I think that would help in tenfold to do it there. Obviously, a dream scenario is someone luring Tuca out of Boston since he's a free agent, but he's either going to stay in Boston or retire. So I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I agree. Okay, well, we could talk about this for a long time. Uh, Toronto is going to be one of the more interesting teams to uh, watch in the offseason here. I thank you, Joe, for coming in and giving your piece on that. Um, so it made me look at things maybe a little differently as well. My first, my original thing was thinking trading Marner too, but then the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know what, Cap's going to probably go up, give these guys more, a, a little more of a shake. Not to mention, these guys are learning to play in Toronto. <laughs> it's not like you're playing yeah. in Carolina or something like that. These are kids that are learning to play under the highest pressure you could possibly have. You're playing in the New York of Canada. In the New York of Canada. And you gotta, I think it's best to give them time to be able to just grow into that role, that warrior capacity. After seeing what Montreal is, look at that tape. Somebody said, just sit Marner down and show them Corey Perry and Gallagher tapes over and over and over again and say, this is what you want to be next year. Thanks, Joe. You are on Sports Fanatic News. Go check out yep. that channel. And we are both part of the Steel Flyers All Sports website. Uh, check it out. We had 18,000 hits last month. No, I said 21,000, wasn't it? Hit 21,000. I think, yeah. People are liking it. You might like it, too. I'd highly recommend you check it out. For me, I'm pro -Lewism. This is Pro Joe, Professor Joe Bork. Thank you for checking in on us. Have a great day. Okay, bye.